Hi, in this last video on system preferences, we're going to try and hammer through uh, these last two normal rows. One is internet and wireless, the next is system. Uh, see our previous videos on personal and hardware rows. This last one down here, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, you probably, well, you might not have some of these. You might have different ones. Who knows? But we're not going to talk about those. Uh, again, as I've said in the other videos, I'm just going to give you a quick intro to what each of these buttons does uh, and even skip some of them. Uh, you can play around and explore for yourself. You can't hurt them. So let's jump in. Mobile Me, as it will say along the top here, is a great way to synchronize computers, iPhones, iPod Touches. It's also a great way to post uh, photos and videos on uh, websites or to host your own customized websites, things like that. This is kind of the central place where you would type in your member name and password, and then it's going to set up um, your computer to work with that particular member name and password um, in all the different places where MobileMe is useful, such as uh, address book and iCal and iPhoto and things like that. Here I am signed in. Uh, if I go to sync here, I can turn this on, leave it on automatic, and then check the boxes for which things you want to synchronize uh, between your computer and mobile me's kind of database. This is a, a good way of kind of backing up some of this information like calendar and contacts or synchronizing it with other devices. Uh, click on the iDisk tab to view your settings and preferences for your iDisk, um, which is a great way of storing uh, things like documents or, or movies or uh, important files kind of in the cloud, as they say, keeping them um, with mobile me just in case something were to happen to your computer or to make them accessible to, um, to you in other places. The Back to My Mac tab here is a feature that would allow you to access your machine from another Macintosh running Leopard, uh, assuming both machines are turned on and connected to the internet. So uh, if you were to click the Start button here, go on a road trip somewhere, uh, you could get on another Mac running Leopard, uh, type in your mobile me account, and be able to access this Mac right here uh, as long as it's turned on. So that's a, a useful feature. Uh, I'm going to skip network here. That's a whole nother beast. This is basically where you can uh, modify your wireless or wired connection to the internet, but we're not going to tackle that here. Bluetooth. Um, I generally keep this turned off if I don't need it. Uh, because really, who needs more radiation going through the air? Um, but for training purposes, I've left it on. I'm using my Bluetooth mouse here. Um, if you don't have anything connected here, there's going to be a big button here that says set up new device or something like that. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory to walk you through and, uh, and get a new Bluetooth keyboard or mouse hooked up. For sharing, uh, these are going to be a lot of fairly specialized services, um, so I'm not going to cover these in this video because if you need to use these, then you're probably not going to be watching this video. Um, as a rule of thumb, I just keep them all turned off uh, unless I need something. Uh, it tends to make the computer slightly more secure. Accounts. This is the big kahuna. Uh, it will list any accounts that you have set up on your computer here. Click the plus button down here to add new accounts for uh, kids, spouses, guests, parents, things like that. Uh, this login options here is going to show you how your computer is going to log in. If you don't want it to log in automatically, um, if you want it to require a password, then click off here. Um, fast user switching is a nice feature here turn it on, uh, that will let you switch between your different uh, users without logging your users out. So it's a, a nice way to be able to use multiple users at the same time without having to quit whatever you're doing to switch over to someone else's account. If uh, a lot of this stuff is grayed out, you might have to click on this lock button down here and enter in a system administrator's name and password. Okay. 
date and time, again, fairly self-explanatory. I have mine to automatically set my time from a website, so I don't need to uh, put in any of this information manually. Of course, you can check your time zone. In Snow Leopard, there's this nice new feature to automatically set your time zone based on your current location. So if you do travel, say, from the U.S. to Europe, for example, um, and this box is checked, then the first time you open up your computer and connect to any Internet source, it will uh, change your, your clock automatically for you. Uh, last tab, clock along the top here, will just give you options on how you want your clock to display up in the menu bar at the top here. Parental controls. Who doesn't like parental controls? Uh, you cannot set parental controls on an administrator account, but if you have a standard account set up, it will show up in this list over here. You select the account you want to uh, enable parental controls for, and then click the Enable Parental Controls button. You can go through these five tabs and kind of hide profanity and restrict websites and set time limits, which is a really new fe nice new feature. You can also uh, create logs for um, what that account uh, was used to visit websites for and things like that. Software update uh, is just a place to kind of set settings and whatnot. Uh, most of the time you won't go here in System Preferences. Rather, you'll go up to the Apple menu here and choose Software Update from the list there. Uh, speech and Startup Disk, you probably won't use very often, uh, so we're going to skip them because YouTube has a 10-minute ten, ten time limit, so i got to keep moving. Time Machine here, we have covered completely through and through, in and out, in a separate training video. So we're not going to cover it again here, but we will link you to the uh, Time Machine video. Last thing in the list is universal access. This is great for people who can't see or hear uh, super well. Uh, so you can kind of toggle on and off all these different options and play around with it. VoiceOver will let uh, will have your computer read to you whatever is written on the screen. Uh, zoom will, of course, zoom in. So I'll turn this on to demonstrate. Hold down Control on my keyboard and then scroll up or down on my trackpad or mouse. And as you can see, it kind of zooms in and out of whatever I'm, wherever my mouse is. Okay. So that's a nice feature. I usually point people to that if they think the font should be bigger on their computer. But for example, this font along the menu bar, you can't change the size of it. So instead, you could zoom in and out of it to, uh, to read exactly what it says. Um, and that works all over the computer no matter what you're looking at. So nice feature to turn on and off. Um, if you really want to drive people batty, you can use this keyboard combination, Control, Option, Command, 8, and it will invert their screen colors. That just drives people up the wall. It's real fun. Command, Option, 8 to turn it off. Uh, obviously, kind of flip through each of these tabs here for hearing and keyboard, mouse and trackpad, to change um, your universal access settings to make it uh, more accessible for you. I hope that wasn't too fast. I hope that was useful for you. That covers the uh, bottom two rows of the standard system preferences window. Again, look through them yourself, explore away, change settings, have fun.